North Korea. The fact that the direction of the country has to be indicated prior to the name of the country is a giveaway that we're dealing with a Cold War related phenomenon. In the past six years, North Korea has gotten more and more boisterous in its threats. And as its people suffer, the fate of perhaps a billion lives hangs in the balance. It is a teetering Jenga tower where if one major block is pulled, the fragile piece surrounding the ceasefire from 64 years, three months, and a day ago could come crashing down. The question is, is war avoidable or inevitable? In this video, I assume the position that war with North Korea is inevitable, which leaves us with several avenues of approach. Optimally, the time to go to war with North Korea was about 10 years ago if we were going to do it to liberate the people and bring democracy to the peninsula. Arguably, China may have done something, and that is the sole reason the U.S. is not taking action, in my opinion. But the continued threats that North Korea makes only serves the idea that they are getting more and more capable by the day of causing real damage, not just to the areas surrounding Korea, but to the United States itself. Before I get too far ahead of myself, though, let's examine the approaches we have as of today. Strategy 1. Conventional all-out war. The three options I see as possible regarding this are a preemptive strike, a preventative strike, or a defensive war. Under the preemptive strike uh, option under conventional all-out war, uh, the U.S. simply coordinates a massive, swift, and an absolute takedown of the North Korean government and cover all the bases regarding possible foreign action. Worst scenario in this situation is not what North Korea would do, but what her larger allies would do. At this stage, it's doubtful whether or not China would get involved, but we'll discuss this with nuclear ramifications later on in the video. Option B, a preventative strike. The U.S. sees a mounting North Korea attack and strikes first. Less planning is involved and therefore more collateral damage is possible, but it's more justifiable in the eyes of the world. Option C, a defensive war. North Korea strikes first, and we fall back steadily, letting their men fall into a continuous meat grinder. This result is something North Korea is very aware of and is keen to avoid. However, they may have some kind of trick up their sleeve we don't know about. Strategy 2. Coordinated tactical takedown of all major North Korean figureheads. A lot of times, uh, people have mentioned that the United States has a definitive plan to take down all the major figures within the North Korean regime, and therefore you'd have a, uh, a monster without any heads to actually plan and coordinate the entire society. Uh, and with this option, we have two possible uh, outcomes. It works or it doesn't. Uh, first, we'll cover the prerequisites and results of this actually working. To th for this to actually work, North Korean morale would have to be low. Uh, and with this, the North Korean army essentially is up for the pickings or simply falls apart and surrenders. Uh, a possible Chinese or Russian intervention would require them to directly and within the public spotlight restore an autocratic dictatorship, which is a fairly low, uh, fairly low possibility because if they look like the bad guys, it's going to be a lot easier to justify... Um, their actions as being immoral in the future. And option two, this doesn't work, and the prerequisites and results of that. A prerequisite of it not working would be the North Korean morale being high and them having uh, certain things in place to restore their leadership capabilities um, if their major leaders were taken down, including Kim Jong-un. And uh, as a result of this, the North Korean army would stand together and as far as intervention goes, the Chinese and Russians could uh, send weapons, troops, supplies, all secretly to the North Koreans. Um, undoubtedly, these nations have already been doing this, and um, they probably have also been reinforcing the North Korean governmental structure so that it won't collapse if we take down their major leaders. Um, but this, it not working, would make conventional war sloppy. So if you go with if you go with the strategy of coordinated takedown of all the nor major North Korean figureheads, and it doesn't work, you're looking at a worst possible state for a uh, preemptive strike against North Korea. Maybe this could be part of a preemptive strike um, and make it work better, but that's arguable. Strategy three: a proxy war. Uh, the United States backs South Korean troops, much like how American troops have backed Iraqi troops in Iraq. 
Uh, this isn't a very likely option as it doesn't ensure swift results and would lead to an unnecessary amount of struggles and deaths. Even though it would look, it, it would be questionable even on a international diplomatic scale, but it, at least it wouldn't make the U.S. look horribly um, directly behind an attack against North Korea. But again, this isn't a very likely option, but it's still worth consideration. China would still be a big issue in this as well. Option four, and this is the big one, nuclear war. Now, theoretically, all of these options could lead to nuclear war, and that is incredibly important in factoring in the decision to go to war with North Korea. However, there is technology that exists, as far as I am aware, that can target and take down rockets launched from North Korea before they can even get that far into airspace. So that begs the question of two possible prerequisites for the nuclear war possibility. Prerequisite one, we have the technology to stop tactical warheads from being launched, and prerequisite two of a different uh, outcome would be we lack the technology to stop tactical warheads from being launched. Uh, with the first possibility that we do have the technology, nuclear warheads would not be a concern and we could simply proceed with a conventional and blitzkrieg style invasion of North Korea. This brings up several international policy questions, such as how long have we had this technology, and if we've had it for many years, which is likely never to be directly answered, uh, was the Middle East even necessary? But that's kind of an aside. Um, option two would be we, uh, we better be ready to deal with some major, major casualties and societal setbacks, because... With us not being able to stop the launch of nuclear warheads, uh, we would be haphazardly throwing away not only the lives of our allied nation's civilians as well as our own troops, uh, but we would also be risking nuclear attack on our own soil, um, and that could be in the form of an EMP strike or a direct nuclear attack on any population center um, at all. And that would be not just from North Korea, but possibly China and Russia as well. North Korea... With nuclear war, no one wins. Now, with the case of a conventional invasion with strategy one that we talked about earlier, um, this result is much more feasible considering China and Russia's nuclear capability. Um, this is undoubtedly the biggest risk we have, and it's likely why no actions are being directly taken despite North Korea uh, increasing saber rattling. In the past, uh, let's see here, 64 years, three months, and a day. And let's just talk about some risks for nuclear war because I think that this is important. Uh, number one, EMPs. And number two, seeing that both options, seeing that both prerequisites one and two regarding our own missile destroying technology leaves open the risk of at least several million dead, this is a heavy option to weigh. It would certainly be um, much more plausible to invade them if option one was assumed true. But that's a lot to assume, and uh, doing a quick risk-benefit analysis between option one and two under the nuclear war path, um, it's a very risky choice to make for any of these strategies. Why is that? Because China, as well as Russia, as well as North Korea, all have nuclear missiles, and you're essentially playing with a fire that could set the world back a few eras. To put it conservatively. <clears throat> so none of these strategies are appealing, but all of these are possible outcomes if we decided to pursue war as an only option. Given that many people on both sides of the political spectrum in the U.S. seem to agree that North Korea needs to be taken out, and with fairly good surface reasons, few seem to consider the huge ramifications such a takedown would have, or could have, on the world, or how far it may set humanity back. It should also be considered that the balance of world power would be drastically shifted. Everything would need to be assured to go to correctly if we were going to invade conventionally. And given all the uncontrollable variables, it is unlikely war is the best path to be taken. If we did have a uh, conventional strategy and we uh, invaded North Korea, North Korea being liberated and all, um, with very few problems, the Chinese would undoubtedly take up a new stance and become even more aggressive on their border, with the newly united Korea. The conditions of a surrender with such a war are also important to be considered, as officially, both China and the previous Soviet Union, i.e. Russia, are both on the side of North Korea in the war and would have to come to the terms table as well, meaning that a fully democratic government 
may not even be feasible in, in uh, talking table terms. It may not even be possible if we took down the North Korean government and we were able to, and they didn't, and they didn't take any violent actions um, against us. And that's a lot to assume. Now, I know you're probably all thinking of a different communist government that was split in the North and South that we went to war with anyway. Uh, but I'd like to point out here that Vietnam was unique because China and Vietnam. Uh, didn't get along very well either and didn't really back Vietnam more or less just wanted to control them and Russia did not exert enough levels of control there to make Vietnam a big enough threat to the US uh, currently the US and Vietnam stand on relatively good terms considering where they both stood about 50 years ago um, but like I've said here the path to changing Korea may be slow and arduous currently and may take maybe a hundred years or more but the need to change things immediately for the North Korean people may not be the wisest decision to make considering the unthinkable possible results of such an action but like I've said this is a video discussing the possibility we went to war with North Korea and the likelihood that the country would be united under democracy I'll go so far as to say that the chances are modest at best and the, but the risks are unimaginably high uh, but also, given our current leader, who has made such decisions in the past as to threaten North Korea with nuclear war, this is not outside of the range of possibilities, and thus uh, these kind of ramifications should be considered, which is what this video is really about. So, war with North Korea would likely lead to a step closer to a conflict with China and Russia, uh, either immediately, with them getting involved in the war right off the bat, um, leading to a chain reaction that would result in World War III, or gradually, um, or casualties would in no doubt be as high or higher than in World War II. Considering China and Russia seem to be cozying up, it is not outside the realm of possibilities that Russia may initiate an invasion of Europe simultaneously, while China reinforces North Korea from the north, leading to a much more large and uglier war than we intended to start off with. Much like World War I. Uh, and the question is, could we win it? Maybe. Um, but I really don't think that that's what matters, is uh, the results, as we've seen in the past, of wars being over quickly tend to not, very, very rarely are wars over quickly. Um, so, in conclusion, a sword in the sheath keeps another at bay. And an arms race and brinksmanship are arguably all right. They're all right if they prevent the real deal. We live in a time of radicalism and polarized politics, and under such conditions, we must reflect on if they're the catalyst to an illogical reason to start a catastrophic war. Uh, and I think that's really what we're struggling with in terms of society right now. Um, now, I dismiss those who argue that the human population should be greatly reduced uh, as for fear of some sort of Malthusian curve. Um, as these people seem to lack the human element of empathy in saying this, and also ignore the fact that we are intelligent beings that can think and restrict ourselves when the time is uh, needed for us to do so. Um, but I embrace the idea of adopting logical and reasonable solutions to the, such volatile problems that we face today. So, what would happen if we went to war with North Korea? Not a lot of good. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments, feel free to comment below. Uh, subscribe to my channel for more content, and I will see you all next time.